Morning. Welcome to Menada Calvary Baptist Church. This is a Sunday morning message. We're going to start out today in first, uh, Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. This will be our text. We'll be traveling throughout the Bible. Many verses today. If you want to just stay here, and I'll go f go through and read them. It's a lot of a lot of scripture, but the word of God is important today. And I'll start with Second Peter, verse chapter th three, verse one. This is the second epistle, beloved, now I write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and by the commandments of us and the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying they... Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this is they were willingly are ignorant of by that by the word of God and the heavens were old and the earth standeth out by of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved under fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of the ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of these one thing, that the day of the, with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, would, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass away in the great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works therein shall be burned up. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word today. We ask now the Holy Spirit to speak through it. Speak through me to give us what you want us to hear today, what you want us to take home with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Peter gives us three important facts about uh, God and the promises of Christ's return. God's word is true. Peter wrote this second letter to awaken and to rouse the readers then and the readers today also. It's easy to uh, get comfortable and uh, accustomed to just reading the word of God. It's easy to get comfortable in church and some fell asleep in church in Paul's day. They were comfortable, they were. So let's turn to Acts and just look at this account. Keep your finger in Second uh, Peter, Acts chapter 20, verses seven, verse seven down through 10. Chapter 20. And it was upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continue his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chambers, and they were gathered together. And they sat in the window, and certain young men named Equus, being fallen asleep, into sleep, at each sleep, Paul was, Paul was, uh, long preaching, and he sunk down to sleep and fell down in the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on, fell on him and embraced him and troubled not, for his life was in him. He preached a long sermon. Some think my sermon's are long. He got tired and he fell asleep. But Paul he healed him. Church today is not to be asleep. It's a time, today is a time to be awake. Know what's going on today. There's a lot of things happening today. A lot of changes in this world today. And we must, be, pay, must pay attention. Be awake. Take me, this message serious today. 
Take the word of God serious today. Take God serious today. Because time is short. We are running out of time. As many Christians, as Christians, we're supposed to live a godly life. A god honoring life. And seek to win those that don't know Christ today. Turn to Romans chapter 13. Chapter 13, uh, 11 to 14. And that knowing the time that is now is a high t time to wake out of a sleep. It is now is our salvation nearer than when we were believed. The night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly in it, as in the day not in rioting, drunkenness, not in chambering, wantonness, and in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We are to love our God. Love the Lord Jesus. Be devoted to him because his return is not far off. The followers of him, what will he find us when he comes? What will he find us doing? When he comes. Paul tells us to be the light of Christ. Be a light unto this world. First Paul says, wake up. He tells us that in First Thessalonians. Paul tells us to wake up. First Thessalonians 5, 4 through 6. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day sh should overtake you as a thief. You're all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of, of night nor of darkness. Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Wake up. Paul tells us to wake up. Then Paul tells us to clean up. Turn to, and John tells us that also. In 1 John, 1 John chapter 3, 2 and 3. Beloved, there are we are the sons of God, and doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every man that had this hope, and purify himself, even as he is pure. Clean up. Clean up today. How will the Lord find us dressed today? What will we look like today to him? Are we going to look dirty? Or are we going to look clean? Last, Paul tells us to grow up. Romans 13, 14 says, Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ to make no provision for the flesh and for all the lust thereof. Put on means to become more like Christ. Where we grow today when we eat the food. Sometimes we grow out instead of up. But we grow, we need to be fed, we need to be nourished by food. Our spirit needs to be fed also. It needs to be nourished. So we feed it with the word of God daily. You wouldn't go without eating a day. You shouldn't go without feeding on God's word today. So we will grow and we will become more mature. Back to our text, uh, for two and three verses, the scoffers. When the scoffers come in the last days, they will deny the truth. They will deny the power of Christ. They'll deny the coming of Christ. Jesus will bring judgment to those that reject him. This has been the pattern all through the word of God. As far back as Enoch. God warned of judgment as far back then. Let's go to Jude. Jude 14 through 16. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that, that, that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have 
they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. There will be murmurings, complainings, walkers at their own loss. Their mouths will speak great swelling words, having men, men's persons and admiration because of advantage. Many told of the day of the Lord. What is the day of the Lord? When it speaks of the day of the Lord in the Bible, what does that mean? That is referring to the last days. They, they warn people that it would be judgment. And that period of judgment, the day of the Lord, is called the ten, Jacob's trouble, and it's called the tribulation. The day of the Lord is coming, the tribulation. Our Lord also talked about the day of judgment in his Sermon on the Mount of all this in Matthew 24 and 25 chapters. Paul tells of, of it in First and Second Thessalonians. Then the Apostle John tells about it in Re Revelation 6 through 19 chapters. It's a time when God will pour out his wrath on a Christ-rejecting world. Satan, it's a time when Satan will be given more power, more control. But it will end when Christ Second coming comes. Let's clear up these days mentioned in Bible. The day of the Lord is the day of judgment. It's the end and return of Christ at the end of the earth. The day of God is speaked about in uh, Second Peter. Go down to chapter, back in chapter 3, our text. Go down to 12, verse 12. Looking for the hasting of the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens will be on fire and shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That's a period when, he, when God's people will enjoy the new heaven and the earth. The old heaven and the earth will be destroyed. All evil will be judged, and it will be a perfect generation. Turn to Second Corinthians. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 15, 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, and there shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him, and put all things under him, that God may be in all. The next day is the day of Christ. That's when Jesus comes for his church, which is, we know is called the rapture. And still in 1 Corinthians, go back to 1 Corinthians 1, 7 through 9. So that ye come behind in, in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sh shall confirm all you that unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and to whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Not only does the word of God predict the coming of the Lord, it predicts those who would deny it, and those who would not mock it. Turn to Acts chapter 20. <clears throat> Thirty-one. Twenty-eight. Thirty-one. Preach the kingdom of God and teach those things which are concerned of the Lord Jesus, that all convincing it, no man forbiddeth him, him. Not only does the word of God predict the coming of the Lord, but it also predicts these markers. And First Timothy 2, 4, 2 says, Speak no lies, hypocrites, and having their conscience sheared with a hot iron. These people are not going to be taken lightly. People in know Noah's day, they scoffed Noah. They scoffed at the coming judgment when he told them of it. And the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, 
the people there, they, they scoffed at the idea that uh, their city would be burned and destroyed. Today, <clears throat> if you have done any witnessing at all, you're going to run into scoffers. I guarantee it. I've heard it all. They'll tell you there's no hell. This is all the hell we're going to, ever going to live on this earth. Can't get any worse than it is today, but it's going to. That's what the Bible says. The Bible tells us a different story. Why do, they, why do people scoff? Because they love to live in this sin. They don't want to give it up. They don't want to change. They want to stay where they are. Peter tells us these false teachers, there'll be false teachers who promote uncleanness. Back in our second Peter, go back to the following chapter. Second Peter 2.10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government promoters of them they self-will and are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Their people will be desired, desire of flesh. Now let's go down to 18. For they will speak great swelling words of vanity and lure through lust of flesh and through much wantonness those that were clean escape from them who live in error. If your lifestyle goes against God or the Word of God, you must either change your lifestyle or change the Word of God. And that's what just many of them are doing today. Instead of changing their lifestyle, they're changing the Word of God to fit their lifestyle. Now what are the, their arguments? They will go along with scientific approach of how this world was created scientifically. But you can't take Bible prophecy into the science lab. Second Peter, verse 1, 19. We also have more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye, ye do well that ye take heed as under the light that shineth in dark place, until the day of dawn and the day of star rise in your hearts. <clears throat> you can trust the word of God today because it's the word of God. No matter what anybody tells you, no matter what they say, Jesus Christ is coming. The Bible fulfilled all those prophecies that prophesied of his first coming, and it will fulfill all those prophecies of the second coming. Back to our text. Verses 5 through 7, chapter 3. These scoffers <coughs> argued against Christ's coming. So what, what did Peter tell them? Peter reminds them of what God already done in the past. Uh, Peter uses the events of history. Uh, the flood of Noah's day in verse 6. And then the events of God's creation when he recreated the heaven and earth by his speak of his word. Peter argues, argument was the same God who made the earth can intervene, intervene any time he wants. The second event, the flood speaks of judgment. God has the power to step in any time. <clears throat> Psalm 115.3 says, but our God is in the heavens. He had done whatsoever he pleases. Pleased. There will be no more floods <clears throat> to destroy this earth. The rainbow is God's promise. Uh, the next judgment will be fire. God will make a new heaven and a new earth. That's found in Revelation 21, 1 through 3. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. <clears throat> Peter proved his point that God is able to interview in history at any time. He'd done it before, and he will do it again. But these scoffers had a next argument. Why has God delayed his coming? This coming of Christ 
and the judgment of the world has been around for centuries. Has God changed his mind today? This world is ready for Jesus Christ coming for sure. So let's look at Peter's answer. And it's found in, back to our text, 2 Peter, verses 8 through 9, chapter 3. Once again, calls the scoffers ignorant. Ign what they were ignorant of is what God had done in the past. They're ignoring God's eternal, that God was eternal, God was forever, forever, and he had, had but no end. We have a beginning. We were born on this earth one day. We have a beginning, but we have no end. We are eternal. Our souls are eternal. We live on forever, one place or the other, heaven or hell. And that depends on what you do with Christ's offer of salvation today. Eternity is about time. The whole universe is only a few days old. So you can't not accuse God of being slack of fulfilling his promises. He has not limited the time. God is never in a hurry. He could, have, he could have created this whole universe by the snap of his fingers, but he done it in six days. These scoffers didn't understand God's eternity. eternity. Nor did they understand his mercy. God's delay of coming to Christ is because of his mercy. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God is a long-suffering God because he wants to get everyone a chance to be saved. God is delaying his coming because there's still more people who need to be saved. God's delay also tells us he has a plan for this world. What is that plan? He wants sinners to be saved. Peter uses the word repentance. Repentance is important in salvation. You can't get saved without repentance. Repentance is a change of mind. A sinner changes his mind, changes his actions about sin and about Christ and turns to Jesus Christ by faith. Turn to Acts 20. Verse 21, testifying both the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. This gives it a formula for salvation right there, which has been two main points, repentance and faith. You need them both to be truly saved. Back to our text, the last verse, verse 10. No one knows the day or the hour when Jesus Christ is coming. He could come in any minute now, any time. He'll come when we, when we least expect him. He wants, but what is important is that we are ready. We are ready for Christ's coming. The last part of the verse tells us the destruction of the earth. What the main theme of this verse is, make your decision before it's too late. If you're not saved today, get saved. If you don't have any doubt that you are saved, get saved. If you are a Christian, give your life to Jesus Christ and serve him wholeheartedly and follow him. That's what Peter's message is. That's what Jesus' message was. That's what Paul's message was. That was what the Bible's message was. And it should be our message today. Follow him. Thank you. If you are here today and you may be a Christian, not follow him, follow him, Turn your life over him, follow him. If you're a non-believer today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your savior, get saved. And I'm gonna give you a short prayer. Say that prayer, mean it in your heart, apply it to your life, and accept God as Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I can't remember a time or point in my life I ever received Christ. I repent of my sins. I want to turn my life around. I want to give my life to you, dear God. 
I repent of my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Have your mercy on me, dear God. I give your life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You said that prayer. You are in God's family now. It's time to be fed, as I spoke earlier. It's time to mature. It's time to grow. And you need the word of God. And you need to be in a good Bible-believing church that preaches the true word of God. And I recommend coming down and seeing us. We are a small, independent, Bible-believing church uh, that enjoys the Bible, enjoys being taught out of the Bible, applying that Bible to our lives. We meet here Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. down here on the ridge. Come see us. Thank you.